I've been trying to assess what Klopp, Liverpool, have done in the last 24 hours with signings against what he's been speaking about Chelsea in the last few days. But we'll get into that in full details. What's going on guys? Well, watch us back again with an audio for you guys. I hope you're all having a lovely day slash evening. As always, I give you guys the latest Chelsea news, news in, news out. And also going to be previewing the game tomorrow on Sunday, 4.30pm UK time. Chelsea against Liverpool. Massive encounter. So guys... If you can, smash that like button. Let's get at least 500 likes on this video. Subscribe if you're new here. Hit the notification. Tune in daily. It's free. And comment down below your thoughts and opinions. As always. I also want to say, I started Twitch yesterday. started streaming. I've done a bit of FIFA. I've done a bit of COD. Um, I'm trying to play one-on-one -on, -one on FIFA. If, you, if you're good on PS4, hit me up. I'll be streaming it, of course. But go follow it, man. Go support me if you can. Um, I want to interact with you guys a lot more, so hopefully you guys can join my Twitch a lot more and not just about Chelsea news, but we can actually talk about our opinions on there as well. So we're doing both at the same time, so hopefully you guys can go support me there. So of course, um, I want to talk about Klopp very, very quickly. Now, a few days ago he said we're a different kind of club in terms of spending during this pandemic, etc, etc. 24 hours later, or 48 hours later, they've got Thiago and they're going to be signing Jota from uh, Wolves of course 35 million excess um, which is you know he's a very good player there's no disrespect to the players that they signed they're fantastic players of course Thiago is a massive sign as well but I don't understand the logic where you've come a few days ago talking about Chelsea spending money during this pandemic and then you've basically done the same how does that work regardless if you guys have made the money or going to make the money we have as well Simply Hazard's money, Morata's money, exactly what Andy Robertson has been saying as well. He's got a lot more sense than new Klopp, okay? So I don't understand how this Liverpool guy, the manager, is talking nonsense about a club. i am told you, rival fans are shaking, rival clubs, managers are shaking. Now, no disrespect to Robertson, of course, he said everything perfectly. He said, I think the thing to remember with Chelsea spending big is that they had a transfer ban. Um, so they did not spend for 18 months or so and they sold Eden Hazard for a big amount of money. You knew once the transfer ban went, Chelsea would have another go. So well done to you. You've actually got sense. I respect you. I praise you for that. Talking facts, of course. Go give some to your manager, of course, because he needs some of that. Because he's talking a lot of nonsense. And the difference between Liverpool and Chelsea. Liverpool are like talking on Instagram how much they're going to be scoring and all this nonsense. Lampard and Jody Moore is talking about very important game. You know, we need to think about it properly. And we need to be very careful in our tactics and stuff and try to get that win, of course. So, my manager, my club basically know what they're talking about. And I believe Chelsea can get the win in tomorrow, of course. So, guys, let me know predictions for the game, of course. We're going to go through Chelsea news very, very quickly. I know you guys are tired of Mendy, but I have to talk about it. Mendy is soon departing for Chelsea. The goalkeeper bid farewell to his Rennes teammates on Friday. An agreement for his departure has been reached today which was yesterday 24 hours ago according to French outlets um, and he's also not expected to play against Monaco today so he should be coming as a Chelsea player very very soon we know he already agreed personal terms with Chelsea however the fee was the massive issue between the two clubs now it looks like Marina will be getting her weight yet again just like uh, Ben Chilwell, Timo Werner, um, Hakim Ziyech, Kai Havertz you know one by one the more longer it takes the more better the deal is for Chelsea. Now, I'm expecting £18 million. Maybe a few add-ons, but the initial fee should be around that you know, that figure right there. So don't be expecting about £28 million to be going out like the first reports. I don't think Tomori will be going to Renes as well on loan. He will be going out on loan. Um, Everton's manager has been speaking, saying that they are looking for a centre-back. They are looking in the market. But Tomori plays for Chelsea. I don't know if that's a hint that... You know, there's no point talking to me about this player because he plays with Chelsea and Chelsea not going to loan up to Everton. I'm not sure, maybe it's mind games. But Tomori is expected to go on loan, unfortunately. Now, of course, we have so many offers for Tomori. Um, if Chelsea could get offers for Rudiger, they will offload this player as soon as possible or even on loan. But no one wants Antonio. So that's why Tomori has to go out on loan simply because Thiago Silva has come in. We've got five centre-backs. And we don't need that many, especially with the formation that we're playing, of course. So, unfortunately, tomorrow is one for the future. I do want him to stay. And hopefully we do find a way if we can sell a defender. But at the moment, it doesn't look like it. Uh, we also have news on Kalan Hudson. Now, a lot of people are asking, why is he not playing in the wing? Because why is he not starting against Brighton? He should start against Liverpool. Now, Lampard has come out and said, I've got no idea on the rumours about him leaving. I've got nothing 
um, anything. I don't know if there's any truth in it. So not so much to be talking about, I suppose. I have no favourites. I don't lean on people because I like them. I lean on people because I want them to be successful, which will hopefully make everybody happy. Callum Hudson Doy is a very young, developing player, and, and a lot of talk has come his way because of the way his career has gone at a young age. The fact remains the same for all young players. They have to work every day to put themselves in the frame to start now. Two things that I want to say from this. I actually admire Frank Lampard for speaking the truth because I have been watching kind of Hassan and Doe's type of game. Now, defensively, he just does not have that work. I think offensively, he's very good. He can create, he can track into the space and make something happen. But defensively, I've seen him sleeping. I don't see him tracking back as much. I've seen him give the, the um, fullbacks space and pace to be running into, of course. I've been seeing it in uh, pre-season e even the past as well so I totally understand where that's coming from um, a lot of people saying where's the same energy for Lampard what they gave to Sari which is also true but as I said Sari was someone that came out and said he will get there but he needs a bit more time the fans shouldn't be pushing 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 which is basically what Frank Lampard is saying right now because it's not showing what he's capable he still needs to adapt to his game he needs to improve his game but when wingers are out okay injured does that not mean Kalan Hazard should be starting for Chelsea tomorrow against Liverpool? No recognised window if we don't play him, which is a bit of a worry, uh, which is why I would personally want to play him in that team straight away. But it looks like Frank Lampard does have massive doubts on this player. He's still 19 years old, he's still young, he's learning, he will get better, we just need to be a bit more patient. But I don't think personally he'll be starting tomorrow, unfortunately. So I know many of you guys are saying he has to start, we need a winger. We need pace and I totally agree with you but I just do not think he's going to be starting. So that's everything I want to speak about there. And we also have some good news as well. Zappa Costa has gone on loan to Genoa um, on a season long loan deal. Good luck to him. I wish him the very best. He scored that one goal against Carabag. Um Italian Cafu like I was saying. But since then went a bit off. I remember he had that shot against Arsenal when Murata missed a one on one and he smacked the ball. I wish that goal went in as well. That shot went in. So um yeah, that's about it. As I said, Lewis Baker going out on loan to Turkish Club Transport. I told you guys that in a few videos ago, and it's official by Chelsea done deal as well. So everything I've been talking about recently has been going right. Hopefully, we can keep getting that uh, more news in, like Mendy, of course, and Declan Rice. We shall see very soon. If Chelsea come with an offer, he will be poised to leave. You'll ask to leave straight away. But let's get into the print line now. I'm going with Kepa. Reese James right back, Zuma centre back, Christensen centre back, Azpi left back, Kante as a DM, Kovacic in the middle with Kai Havertz being at number 10 going forward of course. Timo Werner on the left, Giroud on in the middle, I was on centre right, Giroud in the middle and Mason Mount on the right. Now if I could, I would put Callum Hudson though straight in for Mason Mount. However, from what I've seen, what I've heard from Frank Lampard, the way he's speaking about Callum Hudson though it does not sound like he's going to be starting for Chelsea, which is why I'm going for Mason Mount. Um, Lampard admires Mason Mount so much. The training, the hard work and the energy is always there. Um, I'm not saying Mason Mount is a bad player, but I feel he needs to play in the middle as well. I don't think he can be playing on the wings trying to make something happen. So that's why you might not see Mason Mount play his best performance in these positions. Called. Like we saw Kai Havertz on the right side as a right back because Lost of shit was kind of isolating him, not making those balls or runs or anything, which is why when Ross Barkley came on, it changed the entire dynamic of the formation tactics, which allowed Kai Havertz to, you know, function with Reese James and Timo Werner a lot more. So we need that kind of movement for Kai Havertz right now. So that's why he's going to be playing in front of Kovacic, who will be playing as a pivot with Kanti, so they can control the midfield. But of course, Kai Havertz will need to track back my. Be, try to be that box to box player that Fran Lampard was talking about and as he said in his press conference someone that he watched as a kid with his brother with his parents so I'm sure they've been speaking about how, you know in training they're always together taking pictures um, talking uh, we know Frank Lampard and Canvas they want to base the game around his play so hopefully we get him in that position hopefully we get that win I feel like Chelsea can get a sneaky 3-2 win 2-1 win it's going to be tight one goal away I'm expecting a lot of goals so hopefully Chelsea get that done. Guys, if you enjoy my content, smash that like button, subscribe for new year, hit the notification, tune in daily. I'll probably do a live stream after the game as well. So hopefully you guys can tune in there. And yeah, check out the Spotify, Apple Podcasts, everything's free, articles,
basically link in description on the link tree you can go click there and take you to all the platforms and yeah you know how it goes man 10 minute gang well, watch yours guys i'm out peace make sure you smash that like button